Peace, Love, and Life family. This is Sister Toffee, creator of KMSC.online, which stands for Comedic Science Channel. That means that I use spiritual science of ancient Egypt to interpret messages using different divinatory systems and also the actual science itself, which basically is a conscious upgrading system. Um, uh, for those of you that already know a little bit about comedic science, you should be able to understand the interpretations of what I'm going to share with you regarding these cards or these images which people have commonly known as the gods. The ancient Egyptians called them Neteru powers of God's nature within our spirits, our true nature, who we are outside of these physical bodies of flesh. Today is Sunday, March 6. I'm going to be asking Spirit to give us guidance for today, all the way through Saturday, March 12th. Happy birthday to Aries and Pisces. We just um, came out of Pisces season. Um, actually, we're still we'll still be in it. See February twenty first through March twenty first, I believe. Yeah, March will March twenty first will be the decan where Aries signs are the focus in the universe and that aspect within ourselves. We all have the same attributes, we just have different uh, portions related to our contract with the divine and how we use these powers of nature to align with our life purpose. So today um, we're going to basically go over these cards and we're going to pull some cards from my commonly used tarot decks for those of you that frequent this channel. Uh, first, I would like to thank you for coming. I'd like to thank you for taking time out of your precious day, out of your precious life. You could be anywhere but here, but you chose to be here, so I appreciate you. I want you to know that. I thank you for your time and your attention, but most of all, I thank you for taking your spiritual evolution seriously. Um, many of us don't understand how important it is to develop our spiritual reality. We feel that our lives are based on the success on, that we obtain in the external world. And I am absolutely not saying that external success is not to be applauded. However, what I am saying is that this world that we're in physically is temporal. So in knowing that, I think that preparing for the eternal would be something that would be considered wise by the, by the creator that's created as the divine. So I'm going to start with the prayer. And uh, I'm going to use this tool here, a tuning fork. <laughs> Even though you can't hear it, um, just to clear the energy around me. And hopefully um, we'll get some good messages, okay? So here we go. Blessed Heavenly Father, Mother God, Master, Creator of the universe that we live in, Creator of all universes and all that exists from past, present to future, known and unknown. Thank you for this day. Thank you for life. Thank you for us being a manifestation of you, expressed in masculine and feminine form, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Both men and women in this earth realm have the abilities to embody the masculine or the feminine energies. We know that through divine intelligence we can master these energies and bring about the best condition for ourselves and those around us. We know that the ultimate goal of you is for us to embody the true template of our original nature, which is something we are still unable to completely embody at this time because of the challenges that we are going through and possibly because of the timeline of human evolution. 
We thank you for your kindness, your love, your mercy, your grace, your protection. We thank you for the powers of nature, fire, water, air, and earth so that you can provide what we need for our bodies to be sustained. Air for breathing, water for drinking, fire for heat to keep our bodies warm, and earth for vegetation and material goods that we need to live. We honor you with the highest glory, respect, and gratitude. I thank you for the people that are present today. I thank you for all of the people on the earth. I thank you specifically for the chosen, those that are working to bring more light, which is expansion and awareness to all the souls on the planet so that we can embody the true nature of our spiritual inner person or inner being, which is the spirit of life as it moves and flows and ebbs with your purpose, divine will, law, and order. Thank you, Father, Mother, God. Bless the people that watch this channel. Bless the listeners today. Provide them with whatever it is that they're needing and specifically the things that they need that are not tangible because through the intangible, we create the tangible. So supply them with the wisdom they need, the power, the strength, the protection, the health, the people, and the power that they need to overcome and push through whatever challenge they're faced with right now. Bless all people of the world, all men and women of the world, regardless to race, creed, color, sexual gender, sexual preference, personal lifestyle, as long as they do not wish harm to others. Bless all those that are loving and kind and wish to embody the energy of divine love and divine will because our purpose is to live in love. Thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you what you're, what you're going to do today. I thank you for our spirit guides, our ancestors, our angels, the different beings that are in the spiritual realm that are here to help us to evolve and ascend with Mother Earth so that we can align with your divine purpose for our universe and our lives as the physical embodiment of you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, Mother God. I thank you for my personal master, whom people call Yeshua or Yahuwah, whom I call the spirit of life, and he is the son, Ra. And so I say, Amen, Ra. Thank you, Father, for this knowledge that you've given me to use the science of ancient Egypt to call on the ancestors and the masters of ancient Egypt and my recently passed on ancestors for guidance, strength, power, wisdom, and expansion for consciousness for the people that are listening and for myself. I ask for forgiveness for our wrongdoings and our misalignments known, unknown, past, present, and future. Have mercy on us. We are but little children doing our best to become what it is that you're calling us to become. I thank you for the blessed word today. I thank you for the gifts of spirit. I thank you for the present ancestors, angels, benefic beings that are here. I ask you to protect this reading and let it bring forth only that which is good for us, for our highest and best good individually and collective and so it is amen and i say i say i say i say okay so that's our prayer you guys go ahead and ask for whatever it is that you want to know whatever it is you're seeking guidance on so that what comes forward is an answer to your query Okay, family, hopefully you feel that energy. I personally do feel 
the presence of spirit. I hope you do as well. So we're going to talk about these images here. This first image here, Heru. This is divine will. It's also the image of the Christ in energy in ancient Egypt. Heru represents the will. It represents two aspects of the will. The turning that happens when we make a choice. How the laws of the universe go into motion and create that which is aligned with what we are thinking, believing, desiring, and the frequency you are vibrating at, regardless to whether it is of a positive or negative polarity. We go through it. If it's positive, that means we've already leveled up in that experience. If it's negative, that means that we are being challenged to level up to it. So it all works out for the good end. This is the embodiment of the energy of the year regarding ancient Egyptian science. This image regard this image reflects the energy of the number six as you can see at the bottom. Heru, the will. The Christian energy the spirit of life, vitality, alignment with Father, Mother, God, the feminine and masculine aspects of the universe. This is the Christ in ancient Egypt. This energy represents the life force and the proper alignment and use of it. And this is the embodiment that the divine wishes for all of us to get into this year of 2022. The three twos add up to a six. And so this represents the divine will of God. This is what they are trying to get us to embody. The divine will, according to our own charts, and our own unique soul templates. This image here, Herakuti, card number five. Excuse me. Um, one second. Even though it's a card number five, it represents karma. This connects us... Oh, I'm sorry. Let me finish. Uh, let me revert back. This uh, also represents the sign of Leo. Okay. Um, and so something really significant could happen in the uh, month of July this year. Uh, since this energy is aspected for the entire year, being a number six, according to ancient Egyptian science. So uh, whether you are a Leo, sun, moon, rising or not, uh, I would think all of us would be... Uh, benefited if we pay attention to what's going on in July or maybe we are meant to plant a seed and by July it should come to fruition maybe start sprouting um, if you want you can check an astrologer or a tarot reader regarding the sign of Leo in the month of July um, this card here is Herakuti this represents the sign of Aries also the planet Mars and again, this does represent the sun, just in case you guys forgot. Leo represents the sun. So this is the life force. So Herakuti is the backer of the law or the will of God. This, this is the energy that supports Heru. Herakuti would be the double will. What you put out, you will get back. The law of sowing and reaping. Okay? So, when this card appears, if you are uh, using this particular deck, the Raul Nefer Amun deck, then it, you are have to, having to uh, examine something regarding karma, a lesson that you may have learned. This year, we should have already learned the lessons of uh, last year. Last year was a number five. This was the card of last year. However, some karmic... Uh, some karmic details are still being given out this year. Things are still being exposed regarding awakenings that we've had last year. Some things we are still becoming aware of. The residuals, the smoke is clearing, more clarity is coming in for us. Okay? So this was last year. However, this represents the sign of Aries and the planet Mars, Aries and Scorpio. This deals with uh, sexual connections, intimacy, relationships, contracts, how we deal with these situations in our life, and if we deal with it according to divine will. Heru. And so this is going to make a very big difference if we're in alignment with Heru. We can be expected to have good coming to us as far as karma is concerned. 
However, if we ignore the guidance we're being given, then we'll be faced with another challenge and we'll be set back on that will of karma. Okay, the divine will is a double, W, double, I'm sorry, W-I-L-L, and also a W-H-E-L-L. It's a wheel that turns, and it's also your choice, your will, your free will to do whatever it is that you choose. The divine gave us free will. You can choose whatever you like. However, what I've been hearing spirits say this morning as I was meditating around 5, 6 a.m., they said, we would like to achieve the impossible. And I said, well, what is that? They said they would like for human beings, spirit beings that are in human form to choose to become the embodiment of what they have come from, which is Father, Mother, God. They want us to choose to be divine, to want to be divine as opposed to destructive. They, they want us to desire to become the avatar. That's what they told me. They would like for us to choose to become the first set of human beings on the planet that operate in divine will according to universal law. That's what they told me. That's what they would like. But it doesn't mean that Sally Sue or Sam is going to choose that. This is just what they told me they desired for this particular set of human beings on the planet, in this incarnation, for this timeline, that's what they wish. Obviously, to me, they're saying we have the ability, we have the intelligence to do it, but now it's a matter of desire, choice, and will. It's not about us not having the knowledge. We have it. But what do we want? So the pivoting catalyst here is desire and choice right here. They would love for us to choose to embody our natural nature. But that's not up to them. That's up to us. They gave us that choice, and they don't go back on their laws. Their laws are set forth. Everything falls on their law. The law holds it all. And who is the law? This brings me here. I have spirit on me. Here's the law. Ma'at Pisces. Also Libra. Scales of justice. A lot of tarot readers I've been watching recently have been pulling the justice card. They are adamant about making sure we all get balanced and justice is served in our lives. Those of us that have been wronged in some way, those of us that believe we've been wrong but are in fact living out a reality that is epigenetic and ancestral karmic this is something that one or more people in the family line will have to deal with you, one thing about one thing i want you guys to know is that when we do wrong or we do things that are outside of the al uh, alignment of divine will heru sign of leo if we don't experience the karma in this lifetime it will come in the next lifetime, not for necessarily you and your next incarnation, because you won't even know who you are. When we, if we do have to come back to this dimension, we don't know who we are. That usually comes through sessions of past life regression, or you're lucky enough like me and realize, you know, uh, through a dream or an astral travel experience in your sleep that you were someone else, which I happen to be, which may sound strange to some. I was a white male. I was in the 1700s. And I was a very tall man. I was poor. And a lot of people were afraid of me because I was like a, you know, I don't know, personal bounty hunter of God. And that's just the truth. I know it because I know what happened to me in my dream. I know it wasn't, it wasn't a, it wasn't a dream. It wasn't an accident. What I felt was real. And I got killed. I felt the knife go through my neck. So, um. I came back as a black woman. Why I'm a black woman? Maybe for me to experience the opposite of the polarity. I don't know. I have no idea. I guess uh, I can uh, continue to ask questions about it or just accept it and 
wait until I get to the other side. I believe that every time we enter another dimension, the veils are through the past life are closed. They don't give us what we can't handle mentally, right? They give us what we can handle mentally. They know where we are calibrated in our consciousness, what we can handle and what will make our brain pop, okay, or explode, <laughs> meaning that, you know, you know, that's when people go cuckoo and end up in uh, straight jackets and stuff like that. They, they do our, their best to protect us from mental illness. But they cannot protect us from our own choices. So this is why this system is very powerful. Okay, ancient Egyptian science is a system. Just like tarot is a system. Just like the I Ching is a system. Okay, this science is a system that, ha that happens to connect you to the powers, the governing powers, which are the Neteru. I don't know if you can see them here. I'll lift this up for a minute. Well, the planets are the Neteru. They are the hubs in which these energies come out of, okay? These beings, these gods, these conscious beings that don't have our composition. They have another composition, but they're intelligent and they have power. So what do I believe? I believe that these are not just, these were not people that walked the planet. These were people, these were attributes that are within the people, just like right now. These are attributes, not the people. These were not people, okay? These were powers of God's nature or father, mother, God's nature in people operating. So therefore they gave themselves the names of these attributes, okay? Amen, Hotep. Amen, Hotep, right? Uh, peace, right? That is immovable. I'm in Hotep, a movable peace, okay? Or a, a, a movable connection and peace with the divine. I'm in Hotep, right? My art represents divine law. Everything that operates in the earth realm is predicated upon the subjective the spiritual realm, the unseen. And what does Pisces represent? The two fish, right? The yin and the yang, the ebb and the flow, the dark and the light, balancing it all, the masculine and the feminine. The initiation and passivity. Well, I'm sorry, initiation and receptivity, right? All of the duality of life, balancing it all, everything is predicated upon this energy of divine law. You've seen the, uh, the winged goddess, right? The winged goddess in ancient Egypt is this energy of Pisces. And Pisces connects us to what? The emotions. It dives deep into all the weird stuff, right? Neptune. Neptune is uh, the planet of Pisces. And so all these strange and unexplained conundrums that we never seem to find the answer for. Science looks like this. I'm not sure if there's others. I'm sure there is. Sciences like this help us to do dive and delve deep within the subconscious mind, which is the place where you can access the Akashic Records. Okay? Maybe you might choose to do ayahuasca Maybe you want to do some mushrooms or whatever. I don't judge anybody that does that. Whatever your means is to reach the divine place where you can open that door to the unseen, to that which is uh, eluding you, do what you have to do. I don't encourage it myself. I don't, use, I don't use things like that. But if that's your choice, be aware of what you're choosing. I don't choose it. I prefer uh, more natural ways to connect to the divine. I believe that everything you need is within you. You don't necessarily you don't necessarily need uh, an herb to gain something you can develop by time, discipline, and study, and humility towards the divine, the source that created you. 
who is not a human being, by the way. The creator of us is not a human being. They're a spirit being. But they made us in human form to be able to adapt to this terrain of earth that we're in. But our spiritual composition is that which they are composed of in smaller portions for a specific purpose. We're not here on a vacation. We're here to do work, spiritual work. I'll tell you a secret. Sister Toffee's personal problem is that I have problem mastering the earth realm. I am not very good at mastering the earth realm at all. But spiritual realm, that's, that's my world. That's where I feel very comfortable. So we all have different things to master. I have to learn how to master the earth realm. I'm actually terrified of the earth realm, honestly. I mean, I like nature and animals, but this whole, this whole Willy Wonka ride is like, it's crazy to me. <laughs> if you guys feel the same way, drop something in the comments. <laughs> Yeah, this ride is cray-cray to me. But uh, anyway, I'm going to stay focused on what I know I'm meant to do and I'm meant to teach about what I've been taught by the divine. And so I'm sharing with you. If you study the science of the Neturu, you will learn how to balance your dark and your light. You see her with the scales? You will learn how to balance your feminine and masculine energies. This is for male and female. Please don't get caught up on these images. This is a female aspect. It's a feminine aspect, gentlemen. It's a reflection. You know, when you're thinking about balancing your books and where you're going to put your money, that is something feminine you're doing, okay? You're going inward, okay? When a male and female get together, the woman is the one that gets entered, not the male. So you're operating in a feminine aspect, a feminine attribute. That's what you're doing, whether you want to accept it or not. A lot of men have a distorted understanding of the feminine. That's why I'm here to provide you with the knowledge of you connecting with the feminine inside of you. And the reason why I say inside of you is because you create women. Women don't create women. Men create women. Men create men and women. You are Baba forever. You are father forever. All of you are fathers, whether you have children or not. Because you represent the potential of anything that can become. Your, your essence as a physical form of the Father. You are the potentate. You are the potency of whatever will become. You are the catalyst. You cause all things that are happening. You do. You are the dominant energy in this earth realm between male and female. And so when you look around yourself, you need to consider what thought that is of a male uh, derivative do you think is causing a specific condition in our world in your environment or what do you see and if you see something you don't like start advocating to change it okay until you men get in contact with the divine feminine within you okay your connection to mother universe those of you that love astronomy, you're studying your mother. When you look up in the sky, that's your mother. She's one big, expansive, eternal womb of life. You're studying your mother. When you study the earth, you study the plants, you study the ocean, you're studying your mother. You have a, co a divine cosmic mother. Ladies, you do well by yourself when you understand you are a reflection of that in a small form and you are to embody the feminine aspect of the Divine Mother. There's a specific aspect in which all of us are meant to master. It could be a masculine energy or a feminine energy. I have in my big chart of Exalted Mars As I've told you before, I was a white male in the 1700s. I'm not saying that for you to think weird of me or for you to judge me or to say she's strange. Or I'm just telling you the facts. I don't really care what you think about me. I know what I experienced. Okay? 
your opinion of me is not my business. It's yours. You can keep it to yourself. I'm not interested. I'm just doing what I was told. But I have an exalted energy of this, okay? Double in my Vedic. Karma. Okay, so this is why when people want to do something to me, they don't tell me, but I know something happens to them that gets them in order. If it's not right away, it'll, build, it'll happen eventually because I know what my chart placements are. This energy is uh, representative of Pisces, but also Libra. Libra and Taurus are ruled by Venus. So this is balance in love, right? And relationships. Equity. Justice. Okay, I'm not a Pisces, but uh, my first birth, which I call the cosmic birth, was in Libra. When I was placed in my mother's womb, Libra was dominant in the universe at the time. Libra energy. Okay, then I came out in Taurus season on a Sunday. So I'm a Leo rising. I'm a Taurus sun and I'm a Taurus moon. But my cosmic birth, which is something people don't talk about, if you want to know about how to understand your, your cosmic birth, contact me at T H E N T R U at gmail.com. I'll tell you how to pay, what you have to do to give me uh, what I need to figure that out for you. And then I'll type up a document explaining what that means and I'll send it directly to your email. You can visit the website at kmsc.online. K as in Karen, M as in Michael, S as in Sam, C as in Cat, dot online. And you can see the services there. Um, I'll probably be adjusting my services, by the way, or my ancestors, my guides have been telling me to adjust the services to what's going on right now. The world's going through a major change, and uh, I need to make the adjustments in uh, prices, you know, to complement the um, cost-to-expenditure ratio or cost-to-income ratio. So uh, I'll be getting that done soon, so... Don't be uh, thwarted by the prices you see on the services tab. Okay. All prices are negotiable. It's just what I'm asking. Okay. It's my asking price. So this energy here of Pisces, which is the divine law, connects me still to my earthly understanding of the, the, the operation of, 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 of equality in the earth realm, in my Libra energy, which is justice, the scales. So I was being shaped in my mother's womb under the Libra energy. I, you see, you have to pay attention to all the aspects of your chart. A lot of people say, well, I was born on this day. I'm, I'm you know, I was born on a Tuesday. I'm a, um, what would Tuesday be? I'm a, I'm a Sagittarius. I was born on a Thursday. I'm, I, I'm an Aries or Scorpio. Rising, you know. I was born on a Sunday. I'm a Leo rising. I was born on a Monday. I'm a Cancer rising. That's great. I'm not saying anything is wrong with that. What I'm saying is you have to study all the aspects of your chart because we are moving and ebbing and flowing with the universe. The universe does not have just one part that's operating. There are many parts constantly moving, operating at the same time. And we have to do that within ourselves. We have to we have to recalibrate. We have to pivot. We have to move we have to move and shake. Well, you know, just like a football player. I don't know, it's football season in. You know those I love to see the guys play football, <laughs> by the way. Uh you know, when these guys get out there and, and, and uh, you know, wide receiver gets that ball and his boys come in and block the opponents, the, uh, provide the defense that they need to get that touchdown. I mean, that's how, that's, that's us, you know, from our blood cells to, you know, we are an inner, we are an inner universe and an outer view. This is, this whole balance 
this war of fighting and bringing balance is constantly going on. Constantly. Everywhere and inside of us. In all aspects, you know, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, biologically. It's all going on all the time. And my art is holding everything in balance while the earth is spinning. So we need to understand the blessing of this supreme power of our creator that has given angelic beings the power to make re our reality stable and still, although we are never still, we are always moving. The earth is always moving. Air, the elements are always moving. Even the fire and the sun is moving. It's a blazing. Earth is moving, tectonic plate motion, ocean water. I mean, movement is always happening. And so you have to understand within yourself, there's always movement happening, but you are the God of your universe. And so if you just allow biological and natural laws that govern your inner being to take over and you don't take any responsibility for things that are under this energy, divine will, choice. Some things are your choice. You're not just an automaton. You're not a robot, okay? You're a spirit being in human form given free will to choose. To make a choice. What will you choose? You are creating your life whether you want, it to, you want to or not. Whether you do nothing or something. I remind myself of the same reality all the time. Because sometimes I just don't even want to deal with this dimension at all. I mean, Many of us have got, basically we got, we got, we got picked up by the uh, earth bus as soon as we came out of our mother and sent straight to school, not knowing who we are, what we are, why we're here, how we're made, nothing. And we're put in this world full of wolves and we get beat up over and mauled up, mauled over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And people expect, <laughs> they expect production and balance out of you. That shows you just how far from reality and humanity we are. We are confused and lost. We do not have the math right at all. <laughs> we don't have the math right. We think we do because it's our ego etching God out telling us we do. We don't. We don't have the facts. We don't have all the facts. We think we do. We want to say, because it makes us look good and feel good, but we don't have all the factors. We don't. It's just a hypothesis. So this why, that's why this upgrading system is very important. Because the divine wants us to be able to use our own powers within our own nature. To connect to what? The divine. We start with our ancestors, whom shoulders we stand on. Card number three. This represents Capricorn climbing up the ladder. It also has to do with the divine word, the spoken word. We have what we speak. We also have what we desire. We speak in more ways than using our mouth. The vibration we amplify amplify that is speaking the passion we hide that is speaking the thoughts that rule our subconscious mind that is also speaking the mouth in itself is what brings it forth from the unseen realm into the physical much faster but speaking comes in many ways this is ruled by Capricorn this is how we climb the ladder or throw ourselves down the mountain. With your words, you will be justified, and with your words, you will be vindicated. Powerful aspect, throat chakra, Capricorn energy, ruled by Saturn. Many people having their Saturn return. Saturn rules a whole lot. Definitely has to do with building up or breaking down. With all those aspects that just spoke of. Our thoughts, our deeds, and our desires. 
But when we speak a thing without knowing what we are, who we are, why we're here, how we're made, understanding that we must maintain balance, we create either destruction or elevation for ourselves and our world. That is each of us. Every single one of us make a difference in the conditions that we experience in our world. We're here. We're a part of the divine. We are creating. I don't care if you are known or unknown. doesn't matter. You can be in a backwoods in a shack in a box. Your thoughts are contributing to the ethereal energy that's surrounding us. Every person is a tower, a beacon speaking to the universe, bringing more of that same energy back into the world. This is why we must learn to agree. If we can get a world global theme, that would be really great. While we're worried about all these small things, like race, like money, we should be worried about what the divine wants from us, what our creator wants from us. We should be worried about, are we missing the mark of what our Supreme Creator, who is so much more intelligent than us, they'll let us know that when we transition. All that arrogance we had was just futile child adolescent behavior. We need to humble ourselves, family. I'm getting a little emotional right now. We need to humble ourselves and know that there is much that we don't know. I love you guys so much. But the divine loves you more. I only have a moment on this earth. I won't be here forever. For those of you that don't like me, I'm very aware of the energies that don't like me very much. I know you're there. That's fine. I'm just not interested in how you feel about me. Continue, carry on, do whatever makes you happy. Okay? I'm going to do what makes me happy. So, that's all for now. So I'm going to call this video Basic Energies That Are Ruling This Month this year and this week. Netters ruling our lives. Something like that. Alright? I love you guys. I'll be back and we'll do a spread and see what spirit has for us. Alright? Remember peace in the mind means peace in the heart. Peace in the heart brings peace in the life. Know that this life is temporal. Don't allow any of these experiences take you out of your balance and if it does just pivot yourself back to that balance because this is just an experience a temporal experience that will be over one day live life knowing that enjoy and more than anything keep balance with because whatever frequency you're vibrating at is the frequency that you will return to when you leave this dimension. I love you guys, and I'll be back with you shortly, okay? Take care.